Hey guys and gals, welcome back to our YouTube channel. I'm super excited to share this video with you because it's a little bit more technical, but it's a really exciting new feature that High Level has rolled out. And we're gonna show you how to do this inside of your ClickHub's account, or if you're a High Level user, I'm gonna show you how to do it inside of your High Level account as well. And that is using private integrations to update a custom value to reflect how many spots are remaining. So in our example, we have a form that somebody's submitting and let's say the form, when they come there, they're gonna be, hurry up, you only have 10 spots remaining. When you submit the form and go to the thank you page, it's gonna say, awesome, you grabbed one of our spots. Now there's only nine spots remaining. And then the next person that comes to that page is gonna only see nine spots remaining. And this is done with only custom values using private integrations. The other way that we can do this is using custom fields. The reason I don't wanna use custom fields is because they get assigned to the contact and so it kind of clutters up the contact view and this information is not really specific to the contact and so to me it's just a little nitpicky thing but it's just my preference i'd rather just stick with custom values this is a little bit of code base but it's really just a matter of copying and pasting the code that we're going to provide for you and then just following the tutorial. So hopefully you'll find this helpful, but you can use this for things like purchases. If somebody purchases a product, you can decrease the available remaining products by one and display that on the page. You can also use that in emails and things like that. So really cool use case for showing some scarcity here and letting people know how many you have remaining to purchase. So let's jump into the video. Before we do, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, click that button down below, subscribe to our channel, ring the bell for notifications. If you leave a comment, we'll reply to every comment as well. And if you're a business owner or you're looking to do online business, I encourage you to sign up for our free 14 day trial. ClickHubs is really an amazing platform built off of high level, which is world-class enterprise software. And we have an amazing community of entrepreneurs, very experienced business owners that can help you and support each other. And so we really, really would love to see you on the inside. If you're using high level for yourself, for your own business, you can also sign up using our affiliate link below, or if you want to upgrade to the 497 SaaS plan, you can do that below as well. And we'll be happy to support you with your SaaS journey as well as share our resources and our knowledge. So please, we'll look forward to seeing you guys on the inside. Let's jump into the video and I'll show you how you can use private integrations to update your own custom values. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use private integrations inside of your ClickHubs account, or if you're a high level user, this will apply to you as well. And so with private integrations, you have the ability to create your own integration that ties into the API to allow you to do powerful things using code and things like that. So I've got one that is going to count down from my opt-in. First of all, the private integrations are new. They've been out maybe a month or maybe a little bit less than that. And basically what happens is when you come into the private integrations, you have the option to create private tokens that you can use. It's just a really secure and simple way to allow you to tie into the API to do very powerful things, as we mentioned. And you can come in here and you can control the scope of what these can access. So a lot of security here. In our case, we just wanna view custom values and edit custom values, so that's the only two I selected. You don't wanna select other scopes here unnecessarily that might, if somebody was to compromise this, they can do other things, so you really wanna limit this. But you can see you've got a lot of things you can do with private integrations. Edit business information, edit calendars, edit conversations, view conversations, of course, view and edit contacts all kinds of things you can do courses forms custom fields custom values email stuff so really this opens up a ton of options for us in terms of what we can do i've been experimenting with this and i'm finding that this will only for security reasons of course make changes within your own sub account so keep that in mind if you're trying to do things as an agency within other sub accounts i don't think this will work from my experience so far but i'll keep you updated on that as well i'm going to show you how to build this from scratch so i'm just going to get out of this for now and i just wanted to show you what we're actually building here a little bit more clearly so i've got this simple opt-in form it says don't wait only 10 spots left you could use this with a purchase as well so if somebody purchases an item you could use this to count down that based on the automations we're going to trigger this based off of this form submission and what happens is when you submit your information your name and email you see now it says only 10 spots left and then once we submit this we go to our confirmation page it says now there are only nine spots left so it's an automatic countdown now if i go back and refresh the home page it should say nine spots left there 
So that's perfect. And before we get too far into this again, I want to show you the reason why I'm using private integrations. There's another way you can do this, and that's using a math operation. So within the ClickHub's automations builder, we have what's called a math operation, and you can select a custom value here. So if I have my countdown here that I want to update, I can subtract one from that. The limitation here is you can use this as your value, but it will only update a custom field. It won't update custom value. So you can't update this number or a different custom value. And if you create a custom field for this, then that's going to be tied to contacts. And so when you come in here to contacts, let me just come in here really quickly and show you what custom fields are just to uh, be clear on that. So if you go into a contact, you've got these custom fields here. And so if I created a custom field to have a number here that I wanted to update, I could do it that way. The problem is I personally don't want to have a ton of custom fields that really aren't related to that specific contact. So this number here is not related to a specific contact. It's a global number. Uh, everybody's going to have see the same number here. So I really don't want to pull that into my contact information here and clutter this up with additional custom fields. And so currently using the math operation, that's the only way to do it was if you were to create a custom field and then you updated that custom field with the custom value. So for me, it's not really a great option. I believe we'll have the option of updating custom values in the future, but for now I wanted to find a different workaround. So what I'm doing instead is I'm using the custom code action. So you have a custom code action here. It's in beta. This is a premium feature. It costs a penny every time you trigger this. So keep that in mind as well. If you do the custom fields option, you don't have to pay for that since the math operation is free. And so keep that in mind as well. But for me, it's not going to be a huge amount in this case. So I'm willing to do this just to keep my dash panel cleaner. So, and also there may be other use cases. So I thought this would be helpful just to show people. So when you do the custom code, you're going to include your properties here, which would be the key name would be first. And then the ID, the data key name would be second. And then you have code that you're going to access here. You can test your code. And so what I've done is I've created my custom code. And I've created two custom values. One is the initial countdown number and the other one is the after countdown number. The reason I did that is when I come here and submit this form, by the time I get to the thank you page, this automation does not run fast enough to update the thank you page. So I have two custom values for that. Let me just show you really quickly. I have one, you can see this is nine. So this is going to be the initial one. And then I have one that goes on the thank you page and that's eight. So as somebody submits the form, this one will change to eight and this one will change to seven. But this was the only way I could do it without additional code on the pages to reflect on the thank you page fast enough. Because again, if I just have one custom value and I have nine here and then I submit it, it's going to show nine on the thank you page because the code is not executing fast enough to reflect in real time on the thank you page. So this is my workaround. And the other thing I did was we need to have a location ID for the API URL so that we can update this location information. And the location ID is just simply in your URL. You come in here and you just highlight your location ID and paste that into this field here. Okay, so all I did here was I give this an, a key name. So in my case, it's countdown underscore number. And then I come in here and I select custom values. And then I select my countdown that I want. So this is going to be the from countdown. And then I do the same thing here. Just select the custom value here. Or if you already know it, you can just paste it in here. And then this is just a unique identifier that I'm using in this code. And then here is my location ID. And this is just a hard value that I have here that I've get, gotten from my URL for my location. So that's it for these. And then I'm going to have a code snippet here that you can copy. And inside the code snippet, you're simply going to need to replace this authorization number, which is your private integration token. You're just going to need to replace that. I'll show you how to set that up as well. This number is something that you should not share with anybody other than maybe your developer, but it's not something you should show publicly and things like that, which is why it's blurred out for this video. So that's really the only thing you'll need to change in this code if you are using these same values. Otherwise, you'll just need to match these and change them to whatever you're going to call them. 
and then this is going to be your actual custom value so this is just you can just select here from your picker here so and then once you get the code in here you can come in here and you can run your test and you can see it's incrementing my value so this is eight this is seven if i run it again this is seven and six so this is telling me everything's working successfully if there's any errors they're going to show here so you can see the errors here as well and that's really it for setting up the custom code action inside of here and for setting up our private integration i'll just show you how to do that from scratch so you can understand how that works as well so let's go into settings in the bottom left and then private integrations and you just create a new integration give it a name so this is going to be my demo countdown and then here you can have your description reduce countdown custom value by one upon form submission and then that's next and here's where you select your scopes so again with the scopes they determine the permissions that your app can have access to and so you want to limit these to as few as possible only what you really need here and in our case it's just going to be custom values and we want to be able to view custom values and we also want to be able to edit custom values and that's it we don't want anything else in this case if you're doing something with contacts you would have to select the appropriate ones for contacts but in our case we just want to limit it to this and again that's just for security purposes that in case somebody does compromise it they can only access your custom values and nothing else and then now it says it's successfully created so now you want to copy this private integration token and you'll never be able to see this again so make sure you copy it and keep it somewhere secure do not share this publicly do not show people on videos and things like that which is again why we have it blurred out if somebody accesses this then it could cause um, real security issues for you and then once you have that safely copied close that out click create and then it's going to give you the option to rotate and expire this token. They recommend you rotate it every 90 days. So initially it's going to do it after seven days. And then after that, the old token will work. But then you'll be able to rotate it every 90 days for security. So once you do that, you just click continue. And now you can see that it will automatically expire in six days and 23 hours. You can expire it now. You can cancel the rotation. But that's really it. And then once you get out of here, that's it. You've got your demo countdown here. I'm going to delete it because I just created this for the purpose of this video, but we already have our private integration created. So you can just delete it and that's simply it. So the cool thing is, is you can create as many of these as you want to do different things within your sub account. Really awesome. You have some options on the agency level too. So if you have a high level agency, there's some things you can do there with private integrations. This is, again, it's a fairly new feature. So I imagine we'll see this expanding here in the fairly near future as well. So really that's it. So create your private integration. And then inside of automations, you're going to create your trigger. For us, we're using the countdown form test. When this form is submitted, that's going to bring people into this automation. And then it's going to execute this custom code. Uh, remember, this is a premium action. So this is, I believe it's one penny every time this is executed. So if you're doing thousands and thousands of these, you may want to look for a better solution. If you have a Zapier account already, you can use Zapier. If you have a developer on hand, you may be able to do some different types of code there. But in our case, we're just going to use this because we're not doing huge numbers here. And then you create your properties, you give yourself a key name, and then this is the value you want that property to be submitted with. And again, this would be the key for your custom value. So if you come in to custom values here let's just go back there you could also just come in here and copy that key so let's go into our test folder here so you could copy these here directly if you wanted to so this is our opt-in page so you can come in here and you could copy this paste this directly or you could just come in here and grab it with custom values directly and make sure you grab the correct one just to go over this again and then do the same thing here and for location id this is just a hard value that you would copy from your url the location and the rest is just pasting the code that i have here replacing your private integration token number and saving make sure you publish this and that's it and then to use this on your pages it's very simple let's go to our first page here so Let's just delete this and this is where I want the number to go. 
So all you have to do is on your keyboard, hit the curly brace and it bring up the pop up here. And now you can just select from the drop down custom values, search for the one you want. We want the custom countdown from the opt in page. And you can see we have it there. I just highlighted it and changed the color to our brand board color of red. And it's as simple as that. Then on the opt in page, you do the same thing, but on this one, again, we want to have our different custom value because it just doesn't update fast enough. But then the next time somebody comes here, it will be updated. And so it just keeps up with everything. So, you know, I'd rather have two custom values hidden in a custom value folder than have a custom field on every single contact that's really not related to that contact. That's just my personal preference. So I thought this would be a great way to use this as a workaround and to share with you guys. So hopefully you found this helpful. A ton of things you can use the private integrations for. And, you know, for me, I am a developer, but I use ChatGPT to help me write this code and it took a little bit of time to get it dialed in right. So, you know, you have to still know what you want and make sure that it works. And again, this is just put this together really quickly. So this is a beta code. So, you know, make sure you test this thoroughly on your own. I'm not giving any guarantees here on this code or anything like that, but hopefully I'll share this code and hopefully you can use this as a starting point and find it helpful. And hopefully you found this tutorial helpful as well. Thank you. All right, that's it. So this one was a little bit more technical, but we're going to provide the code for you. The link will be down below and all you have to do is just follow the tutorials, add your custom values the same we did and it's super easy to do just with copying and pasting this code. So also this will give you an idea of some other things you can do with private integrations. It's a super awesome new feature that's rolled out. And so hopefully this will inspire you to be able to use this to do a lot of other things to customize your own account. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video and thank you for watching.